All right, I want to discuss some very um, exciting research from Sir John Pendry's research group. And we're looking at a transluminal uh, Bragg refracting index um, as a metamaterial. So this is a clear, probably glass, and they, the clear part, the white part in this graph is faster than the speed of light. Let me find my mouse here. There we go. Okay, so this is the white part. So if we think of this in terms of music theory, this is the, uh, these are the negative frequencies below here. Um, and so if we think of this as two thirds with the three half wavelength, that's longer than the one, and this is the one. And so you keep adding these photons and you're converting the negative frequency into a positive gain of photons that are coming out. So you're converting the negative virtual photons. And, and this is the equivalent of a quantum non-local uh, qubit that's created. And so we can verify this. I have the quote here. Um, the we show that these singularities will spontaneously radiate photon pairs analogous to Hawking radiation. And this research was submitted just like three days ago, no, like five days ago. Time varying gradients gradings model Hawking time varying gradings model Hawking radiation John Pendry and Simon Horsley got the first authorship and so we have diffraction gradients gradients that's synthetically moving at transluminal faster than the speed of light velocities contain points where wave and gradient velocities are equal, we show these points can be understood as a series of optical event horizons where wave energy can be trapped and amplified, leading to radiation from the quantum vacuum state. We calculate the spectrum of this emitted radiation, finding a quasi-thermal spectrum with features that depend on the grading profile and an effective temperature that scales exponentially with the length of the grading, emitting a measurable flux even for a very small grading contrast. A transluminal grading contains points where the gravitational speed of light uh, through, through which rays, can't, rays cannot propagate. So that's a singularity. At these points, the rays are either highly concentrated white lines or dispersed black lines, equivalent to white hole and black hole event horizons, respectively. Concentrating on negative frequencies are, we calculate the spectrum of emerging radiation. These equations derive from the classical limit already hint that something special happens at negative frequencies. Next, we further probe the significance of the negative. The presence of negative frequencies in the transmitted spectrum implies that qubits have been formed in an essentially quantum process. Negative frequencies can be populated only by stimulated emission, and therefore the negative frequency flux will give a true representation of the processes available to vacuum fluctuations. 
we shall show that a substantial fraction of the input energy can be converted to negative frequencies, one of which is such an accumulation point for wave energy, whereas the other is the time reverse of this, from which electromagnetic radiation is extinguished. We have demonstrated that the equivalence of these points to white and black whole event horizons respectively and calculated the associated Hawking radiation. The photon emission that occurs when the vacuum state is incident onto the grating. Nevertheless, cl classical stimulated emission experiments can reveal the same ampl amplification process and positive to negative frequency conversion. This makes acoustics a promising platform for investigating these effects, connecting to recent work demonstrating amplification of acoustic waves through positive to negative frequency conversion. And so that's their recent paper, but they cite a paper from last year stating, structures which appear to move at or near the velocity of light contains singular points. Energy generated by the motion accumulates at these points into ever narrowing peaks. In this paper, we show that energy is generated by a curious process that conserves the number of photons, adding energy by forcing photons already present to climb a ladder of increasing frequency. In general, these systems, though they break, time reversal symmetry. So I'm just quoting excerpts here. The, no, the number of photons in period, remembering that negative frequencies have positive energies, the complex conjugate of the compressed wave. Despite being compressed, it contains only of forward traveling waves. This does not guarantee that the, all the components, wave vectors, are positive. If negative frequencies are excited, a forward traveling will, ha uh, will have a negative wave vector. That's a typo in the paper. We argue that when a negative frequency is excited, the discrepancy between the two theorems shows that the two photons must be added to the system. We take, we take away the negative energy, one, and add it back with positive energy. So the discrepancy between the unphysical zero-sum theorem and the violated physical sum over positive energy is two photons. Of course, this must be the case if we are to conserve momentum. We note the resemblance of this positive to negative transition to the case of quantum frequent friction where photons are generated when a Doppler shift moves frequencies across a positive negative boundary. Within this range of grading velocities, uh, parity time symmetry breaks down and energy can be extracted from the synthetic motion of the grading. So there you go. It sounds very complicated, but this is Sir John Pendry's work, and I've been studying his work for almost 10 years now. Um, essentially, he's converting the wavelengths into frequency, and by converting the wavelengths into frequency, he has a singularity as a wavelength, um, so it's a zero wavelength, but then it's an infinite frequency as a white, a black hole, white hole. And since it's infinite frequency, it's not energy. It's, it's in order to conserve the, the negative energy, the, with the positive energy as cons conservation of momentum, the negative frequency is then reflected back into an increased positive frequency. In other words, the virtual photon is absorbed and increases the number of positive photons 
in exponentially. So you get two, two positive photons for every time this resonance is taking place. And that's, that's essentially what this image is showing right here is that you have this, just to put it back into acoustics, because they, they say, you know, you can do this with acoustics. So the, the, the idea is to understand this symmetry breaking so that if you think of the one as a black hole, white hole event horizon, um, and then, so then you're, you're increasing the number of photons by constantly resonating the future and the past across each other as a non-local process. Okay, thanks very much.